Hi YouTube. <coughs> I'm doing a video following on my video on socialism. This one is about conservatism. Why some people are more conservative politically than others. Okay, I'm gonna go through a quick list. First one is ethnic fragmentation. If the population is split ethnically, if there's ethnic diversity, then ethnicity becomes and race becomes more important than class. Examples of this is Liverpool. Labour didn't take over Liverpool till the nineteen sixties because there was heavy Irish immigration. The Irish immigrants backed the Labour Party, but the native English working classes uh, became very conservative and reacting to it. Same effect in Northern Ireland. The Northern Irish working classes are amongst the most conservative in Britain. And the USA, they have a fragmented working class, which accounts for the conservatism of the Deep South, which I've talked about before, which took the Royalist side in the English Civil War, which was the most pro British part of America in the Revolutionary War, and which of course fought the Civil War. Frontier societies, these are the most conservative because in frontier societies you have more than enough land and very sparse populations, which means the workers earn high wages, which means lots of people can own their own land, and this of course produces conservatism. You don't have people with their own land or high wages rebelling, do you? No. Examples of this is South Africa. New World, Australia of course, and the Cossacks. These people are all deeply conservative. Cossacks, Bosnians, and Albanians in the Ottoman Empire, they were privileged warrior groups who lost their privileges. Same with the Deep South, same with the Boers, same with the Northern Irish Protestants. No one's more rebellious in reaction than people who are going to lose their privileges. They can fight just as hard as revolutionaries. Harder even, because they often succeed. Another group that are very conservative are personal servants, domestic servants and waiters because they have aspirations to higher social status. <coughs> Women are more conservative than men on average. This may be because of child birth, I don't know, and maybe they have less spare time to think about such things. I don't know. I don't want to go there because I know there are lots of radical women out there, so I don't want to offend them. And another factor that can come into place is the crops that are used. Now, using the Deep South as my main example, their main crops were cotton and corn. Now, Corn growing areas were strongholds of McCarthyism and other ultra conservative movements. And one of the reasons is that corn farmers had an easier time because they were able to feed excess corn to their hogs, so they recycle it. While in wheat farming regions, they're much more vulnerable to fluctuations of weather, so they tended to support the progressive left wing movements in America. And cotton was farmed first by slaves and then by sharecroppers. They weren't like other sharecroppers. Cotton is a crop which has a higher economy of scale, which needs processing by the cotton gin, which sharecroppers were not able to afford, so they were dependent on the planters even after slavery was abolished. So you never got cotton sharecroppers doing socialist or communist unions, or even organising very well. It just didn't happen, those few attempts to organise fell apart. Older people do tend to be more conservative than young people. 
Possibly because they are more tired, more weary, more cynical, they have more, they're more embedded in society. But what really decides whether someone is a conservative or radical is how embedded they are in society. People who are outside the law, like squatters, sharecroppers, or students, people who have no roots in society, a single atheist young male is your archetypal radical. For good reason. And another crucial thing that controls whether people are conservative or liberal is slavery. You very rarely get slave colonies, you bet. I've already said the southern states were the most loyal in the American Revolutionary War. The same is true for the Spaniards in Cuba and Puerto Rico. They initially decided against independence because they were terrified of a slave rebellion if they became independent, just like they had been in Haiti. The almost as conservative were the Spaniards in Peru, because there had recently been an Indian uprising about 45 years before independence. So initially, so Peru was the big stronghold for Spaniards in South America. So, as I was saying before, ethnic fragmentation makes people more conservative. And settled societies are not more conservative, are more, sorry, more radical than frontier societies. Get it right. <laughs> so, people who own property, people who are protected by the laws, Institutions which are legal tend to be conservative. Legal trade unions, legal political parties, even if they're communist. If it's a legal party, it will be conservative, no matter what their ideology is, no matter what they may say in their party meetings, you do not get legal unions or legal political parties being radical. Same with Freemasons. They are only radical in countries where they are abolished. It's legalisation which decides whether something is radical or reactionary. So, I'm sorry for any trade unions out there, but you are not radical no matter how much propaganda you give. Because you are legal, you have a stake in society. The only time British trade unions were radical was in 1799 to 1824 when they were banned. And that's why in Russia, the most educated workers were the most radical, while in the rest of Europe, it was the least educated workers who were the most radical, because the most educated Russian workers wanted to unionize the most, but they weren't allowed. While in countries where unions were legal, unionized workers were the most responsible and disorderly. Finally, very simple thing, if there's recently been a revolution in a country, then it will tend to be more conservative. That's why America is such a conservative country, because they had a revolution before industrialization, before a class system was developed. And their equivalent of class has always been race. So, America and Australia have been ahead of Europe in things like separation of church and state, getting rid of aristocratic privileges, extending votes to working class men, but racially they are more reactionary. <laughs> Sorry, I've been using lots of other words. <laughs> I'd be lucky if this gets even a hundred views, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I will be doing uh, another video about sign language very soon, because I noticed that my Matin video got way more views than any other one, about 10 times more. So thank you everyone who's watched that. I hope this video hasn't been too boring, but no harm done. Almost 10 minutes.